Hey everyone, my name is Andy and I'm one of the sales directors at a company called Team Hired. And we hire for thousands of companies across America and we do it in about a third of the time for a third of the cost. But that's not why I'm here today. I'm here today for a daily hiring tip. This is gonna be the first of many, but I wanna bring this to the world because at Team Hired, we have a large team of dedicated individuals that spend countless hours consulting, coaching, working with and, and helping improve businesses that are hiring right now. And we talk so much about the things that make businesses successful when they go out and hire people, when they make those offers and what their strategies are to retain and, and support those individuals to a point of, of long-term career success. And when you look at everything that we talk about with our clients, it's important that we get this out. It's important that if you're watching this right now and it's helping you that, that we took the opportunity of social media and this world we live in to, to put out some information that, that can help you. So that's what we're here for. And today's daily hiring tip, drum roll please, is going to be, if you wanna be successful in hiring in 2022, you need to treat your hiring pipeline like you treat your sales pipeline. Everybody has a process for their sales if they're in business and they want to stay in business. They understand that there's a certain number of calls or emails or marketing dollars or some sort of outreach that is required to generate a certain number of prospects to work the metrics. They understand that it might take them 10 phone calls to talk to one person. They understand that they might need to talk to 10 people to get one to say yes to a meeting. They understand that they might need 10 meetings, right, scheduled to get you know, tend to show up, right? It's like you start to work these metrics through and you're like, all right, what converts? What's my close ratios? Who shows up? Who doesn't show up? And you can build a model and pretty predictably go out, as you know, and put in the activity and bring people through a pipeline, right? You harvest business, you build relationships, you, you do this outreach based on what you think is going to happen, right? But so many times in the hiring process, we already know what's gonna happen. We know that about one third of the people that we invite to an interview will show up and about two thirds will not. We, we already know that when we make a job offer, it doesn't mean it'll get accepted. And a lot of times we might need to make two or three job offers just to get one to say yes. We, we even know that if we hire somebody and do everything perfect, the industry metrics say that we'll lose about two out of every three people over the course of a year, sometimes less, no matter how good we are. And so when you start looking at these metrics, we already understand. In fact, compensation, all you need to do is go to Google and there's more data than you could ever consume in a lifetime about what is fair to pay people in your market for the job that you want them to do for you. And so, so many times I see business owners go out and they throw money at the problem, the hiring problem, by spending money on a job board and then they get a certain number of applicants. And I don't care if it's two or 10 or a hundred, typically there's not more than a few minutes a day to log in and check it. And if I'm a business owner and I'm busy and I wanna you know, check some leads real quick, right? Candidates are leads, leads as an employee. Uh, I'm probably gonna call the people that look the best on paper, right? This is what we do. We go, we look at resumes and, and, and that would be a lot like me trying to pre-qualify a customer before I ever talked with them. Right? That, that, that would be like me asking you for your credit score before you ever walked into my car dealership, before you ever test drove the car. Right? It might not make you feel too good, might not make you feel too good and, and probably wouldn't convert very well. But we do it all the time in the hiring process and all it proves is that good resumes are written by people that are very good at writing resumes or very good at finding or paying people to write resumes for them. But some of the best hires that have ever been made in your industry, right? are with people that didn't know how to write a resume, that even if they did know how to write a resume, it may not on paper tell you everything about who they are as a person. You're gonna get way more from this video with me right now than if I emailed you my resume, right? And, and that's why it's so important to look at this and say, okay, as a business owner who's trying to hire in 2022, if I continue to just throw money at this and call a few people based on their resume every day and hope for a hire, and not understand that I may need 200 applicants in my pipeline just to get 10 actual interviews lined up, just to get two or three actual job offers to get one actual hire. And so if you knew already that you needed 200 applicants to get to that one hire, 
how would that change the way in which you treat your time? And how would that change the way in which you work your hiring pipeline? W would you have something to go by if you went out and got 200 applicants and it didn't result in the hire? Absolutely, because now you can go out and get an additional 50 applicants. You're at a total of 250 and now maybe I get my hire and I can go back and I can say, great, we had 250 applicants, right? There were 150 of those that actually picked up the phone and got in contact. The rest of them, I don't know who they are. Maybe ghosts that applied. I never talked with them. And then out of those people I got in contact with, I really like 30 of them to interview. I invited 30 to an interview and oh my gosh, 10 showed up. We had 20 people no show us. Out of those 10, I really liked five of the people, but only four showed up for a second interview. Of the four, I really liked two and I offered them both jobs and nobody accepted. Hmm, right? And we can start to look at that and say, my hiring process isn't failing because hiring stinks right now. It's not failing because the job market's a mess. I mean, all of that exists, but do we make that excuse as business owners when our sales are suffering? We, we, we all know that blaming things on the economy, the weather, natural disasters, in terms of our business is not a fruitful activity because it's us talking about things that are out of our control. So I wanna talk about things that are in our control. Your sales process is in your control and your hiring process is in your control unless you don't have one. And so today's daily hiring tip is to start treating your hiring process like you treat your sales process. Think about the hours, the time, the intention, the, the, the amount of precision that you use in a sales process because you care about getting sales, right? Just apply that same exact ideology to your hiring and you'll be just fine. And by the way, if you need help with this and you don't have the time to go out and build a big pipeline like that, we can help, uh, but I'm not here to pitch. I'm here to give you a tip. So have a great day. We will see you tomorrow.